A particular mineral displayed within our world-class museum is one of the most heart-stopping examples of rhodochrosite in the world. She is known as the Alma Queen. Let's chisel away at what makes this gorgeous red beauty so remarkable. I'm your mental curator, Johnny Hemberger, and this is the Beyond Bones podcast presented by the world-renowned Houston Museum of Natural Science. Let's talk rocks. The rocks, Hank. No, they're minerals. Oh, sorry, Hank. You're right. Minerals. Rhodochrosite really needs no introduction. It is one of the most gorgeous and impressive minerals the Earth has in its repertoire. It is most commonly known for its brilliant, translucent, deep red coloring, but can also be found anywhere from pink to yellow to even pale brown. That's fascinating. But why is that? Technically, rhodochrosite is a manganese carbonate, MnCO3, mineral. Its color is actually dictated by its ratio of manganese. In its purest deep red form, it is 47.79% manganese, with other lesser ratios creating its arguably less well-known colors. While we're talking the science of rhodochrosite, I'll toss a few more numbers at you so you can impress your friends. But it's actually quite fascinating. The scale we use to measure a mineral's hardness is called the Mohs Hardness Scale, M-O-H-S. On the Mohs Hardness Scale, rhodochrosite is typically between 3.5 and 4.5. For reference, diamonds are the hardest naturally occurring mineral with a Mohs Hardness of 10. A diamond can only be scratched by another diamond, so a diamond would make mincemeat of poor rhodochrosite but a rhodochrosite would scratch a mineral with a lower hardness. Also, rhodochrosite has a specific gravity between 3.45 and 3.6, with a typical density of 3.69. If you're a layman like me, I know what you're thinking, so here's a side note. Gravity and density are not mutually related. Gravity is the measure of attraction between any two masses, where density refers to the mass per unit of volume. Still with me? I promise we'll move on to the fascinating history of our Alma Queen after this next blurb. Many minerals crystallize in specific patterns, and the pattern for rhodochrosite is trigonal. For those of you enthusiasts pouring these descriptions over yourself like warm honey, according to ScienceDirect.com, quote, the fracture is uneven to conchoidal with brittle tenacity, vitreous to pearly luster, and white streak, end quote. And I don't think this next bit would be a shock to anyone, but rhodochrosite is imbued with cultural significance to say the least. Here are a few brief examples. It is the national stone of Argentina and plays a pivotal role in Incan mythology. The Argentinians call it the Inca Rose. The Incan rulers believed it to be the frozen blood of their leaders. Argentina keeps rhodochrosite as their national stone because it symbolizes their natural richness and pride. It is also the state mineral of Colorado, symbolizing the state's rich mining tradition and geological treasures. Also unsurprising is that throughout history, across a plethora of cultures, rhodochrosite has symbolized and still symbolizes love and passion. Gee, I wonder why. Our museum has the privilege of possessing one of the largest rhodochrosite specimens in the world. Yes, the Alma Queen. I was able to catch up with Joel Barch, our very busy president of the Houston Museum of Natural Science and curator of our mineral collection. As we took a brisk stroll through the museum, I got the scoop on how our institution procured the illustrious Alma Queen. Here's Joel. The Alma Queen means so much to this museum. People don't realize it, but that was the key piece in the Perkins Sam's collection that we bought in the mid-1980s when the rest of Houston, including this museum, was in a massive economic depression. And one of the key reasons we acquired that, that collection was because the centerpiece was the Alma Queen, an insanely famous mineral specimen, if that makes any sense. I mean, it's been featured in National Geographic and all kinds of 
news stories and media stories for the last 50 years. So it was very, very famous. So when I became, came here, you know, it transformed the museum into a, from a sleepy little community clubhouse into the International Science Museum juggernaut that it is today. So a little more backstory. The Alma Queen was originally found in the Sweet Home Mine near Alma, Colorado in 1965 by John Souls and Warren Good. And as Joel mentioned, it eventually made its way to our collection in the 1980s. The Alma Queen rests in a naturally artistic composition, embedded in a matrix of quartz and tetrahedrite. Given its natural pose, it has also been referred to as the Mona Lisa of the mineral world. Many regard the Alma Queen to be the finest example of rhodochrosite ever known. And among collectors and connoisseurs, the finest mineral specimen of any kind ever found. It's remarkable to learn that many consider the Alma Queen to be the most impressive specimen ever found, especially when you are lucky enough to see it in person in context among so many breathtaking stablemates. It is truly gorgeous, and as you can see on your screen or podcast thumbnail, it is not difficult at all to understand why. Thank you so much for listening to the HMNS Beyond Bones podcast. I've been your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Check out the description for links and goodies, and be sure to follow this podcast and share it with your friends. You can also follow us on YouTube and across all of our social media channels. Just search for the Houston Museum of Natural Science. But until next time, stay safe and stay curious. Curious.